What's up, y'all? <laughs> Our world is changing. Artificial intelligent algorithms run everything now. Automating our texts, automating our prescriptions, automating ads on social media for things we didn't even know we needed. Pretty soon, artificial intelligence will take care of all of our basic needs, allowing us to lead lives unencumbered by the petty tasks of mundane everyday life. Sounds great, doesn't it? But there's a dark side to our brave new world. Artificial intelligence has infested corporations and governments, allowing powerful people the opportunity to whisk undesirables away under cover of darkness, changing our society from a collection of diverse individuals into mere cogs in an increasingly destructive machine. Is this how we relate to technology? Is this our new reality? Is this what we can expect moving forward into the future? No. This is the plot for the 2002 sci-fi movie Minority Report starring Tom Cruise. <laughs> and The Matrix, and Blade Runner, and 2001 A Space Odyssey, and Brazil, and Snow Crash, and on and on. So, no, it's not exactly reality. Stories of artificial intelligence spelling the disaster of humanity permeate our existence from the current sci-fi dystopias through our literature all the way back to the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. And sometimes those stories, they're just stories. There are no driverless cars running people down in the street, no Y2K 2.0, no hordes of violent zombie clone sheep waiting for us at our doorstep. That stuff's ridiculous. But some stories do have a kernel of truth. In the manufacturing sector, artificial intelligence has already eliminated millions of jobs, wrecking economies, not to mention families worldwide. In China, the government recently instituted a social credit system, which it uses to control their populace and also oppress minorities within the country. And of course, because my kids like to steal my phone, every time I log into YouTube, it's Baby shark, do 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 do, baby shark. No matter how many times I press the dislike button. Advances in data science and machine learning point to artificial intelligence as the next great leap for humanity. We stand on the cusp of evolving artificial intelligence from task specific intelligence, where computers can beat us at chess and diagnose medical problems to artificial general and artificial super intelligence, where computers can beat us at pretty much anything. Kind of like LeBron James beating a team of kindergartners in basketball. These advances in technology bring on renewed fears that have plagued us since the dawn of time. Recent survey from the Center of Governance for AI say that only 41% of Americans support its development, and 22% reject it outright. Some of our leaders and great thinkers are starting to voice a concern as well. The famed physicist Stephen Hawking once said that development of AI could spell the destruction and the end of humanity. And the Tesla founder, Elon Musk, once likened AI to, the, to summoning a demon. That's a pretty big fear, isn't it? But the unspoken fear here is a fear of a loss of control. We're afraid the machines will come grow up, get sentient, and then do to us what we have done to the rest of society and the rest of the people since the dawn of time. Our worst sins reflected back on us, the machines finally coming to kill us at last, just like in the Terminator movies. But is this our reality? Is this how we relate to technology moving forward? Or can we rethink that relationship to find a new way to move forward with peace and prosperity. To find an answer to that, I ran a little test. A little while ago, I built a small machine learning system. It's a small rudimentary form of AI. All it does is it takes in large sets of poetry, swizzles it around a bit, and produces wholly new original poems on the end. Nothing fancy, no super intelligence here, just poetry in, poetry out. Kind of like high school English class, except unlike me, the computer turns its assignments in on time. My original plan was to, my original plan 
was to produce a book of AI poetry and then sell it on Amazon to make money. But then it occurred to me, if I'm concerned about whether the machines are coming to kill us, making them write poetry for me and stealing all their money, probably not the best way to make them happy with me. <laughs> so I settled with a simple test. I took two different sets of poetry, ran them through my system to see if there were any differences. The first set of poetry was some of the greatest literature in the history of human, humankind. William Shakespeare, Emily Dickinson, Langston Hughes, Walt Whitman, basically anything you were supposed to read in high school and then maybe didn't, <laughs> right here in my system. And here's a snippet of the poem I got from that. The sun has changed the waves. This bursting light did fill and curl and shake and brow. This drug, your star and holy light, round the everlasting sea. I don't know what that means, but it sure sounds poetic, doesn't it? <laughs> All right. For the next one, I gave it maximum effort. I put everything in. I scoured the internet in search of song lyrics by Justin Bieber. <laughs> and here's what came out from that one. Oh love, I love, love, baby love. The day, all the day, day, love, love. Chicken wings. <laughs> love, baby, love, baby, love, love, love. I call this one surprise chicken wings. <laughs> Do you see the difference though? Same programming, two wildly different results. Now if we look at the programming running my system, similar to the programming or genetic code running each of us, that means that artificial intelligence has some of the same issues in cognition that humans have. There's a little bit of nature, a little bit of nurture, and it's the balance between the two that defines how we'll be. On the nature side, it's our predispositions. My system is predisposed to write poetry. It's poetic in nature. You might be predisposed to be an artist. You might be an artist in nature or an engineer in nature. I'm predisposed to write computer programs and tell stupid dad jokes. We all have our thing. But the nature side, the way we interact with the world and allow it to influence us, the way we influence that world right back, it has a dramatic effect on who we'll be. If you want to be a singer and you study vocal techniques and practice singing, chances are you'll be a better singer. If I give my poetry system good poetry, chances are I'll get good poems as a result. But if all I do is eat fast food and scroll through social media, chances are the results will be somewhat less tremendous. Greatness in, greatness out. Bieber in, Bieber out. <laughs> What's true for humanity is true for artificial intelligence as well. Well, that's great, Joe, you might be saying, but you still haven't told us if the machines are coming to kill us. <laughs> True. And I think I got an answer to that the other day when I was watching my kids play. My youngest son, Brecken, is four years old and he's fearless. He loves to climb on everything without any care for either his well-being or the well-being of any of the furniture he's about to destroy. I walked into the living room the other day. He was perched on the edge of a couch like a cat took a flying leap toward the ottoman in the middle of our living room. Only he missed. He smacked his head on the tile. When he sat up, he said, F -f fudge! <laughs> Only he didn't say fudge. <laughs> Confession time. I come from a long line of people who raised the use of profanity almost to an art form. <laughs> We're the Beethovens of blasphemy, the Einsteins of expletives, the Van Goghs of vulgarity, especially at inopportune moments. And in this particular moment, as I watched my son explore the most flexible of expletives, I had that 1980s anti-drug commercial running in my head. You remember the one where the dad comes into his son's room and sees the son messing with drugs and the son looks at his dad and says, I learned it by watching you. Truth be told, when I hurt myself, usually, stepping on some of their Legos in the middle of the night. I don't say fudge either. <laughs> if we think about the way 
humans learn by watching us. It wouldn't it make sense that artificial intelligence learns the same way? Once we get past their nature, their predispositions, both the future generations we're raising and the systems we're building run from the same information that we give them. We are their world. We are the context from which they draw clues about how to live, how to think, and how to act. They learn by watching us. Now, some of us might be afraid that those artificial intelligent machines are going to attain sentience, grab those nuclear launch codes, and annihilate all of us. Handing over control to a future unknown generation, it's scary. But the truth is, we've already been doing it with our kids, with the people around us. We've been handing over controls to our lives since the dawn of time. And each successive generation has looked back to the generation previous for clues about how to live. We pass on both our sins and successes. They learn by watching us. So the question we should be asking is not, when are the, ma when are the machines going to kill us, but rather, do we have societies worth watching? Do we have communities worth emulating? Do we lead lives that build a foundation for future generations to grow and do the same? Do we? Do you? Our world is changing. Artificial intelligence rewrites that world around us at an increasingly fast rate. We have no way of knowing whether the machines are going to come kill us. Just like we have no way of knowing whether our children will grow up to become raving psychopaths. There are no crystal balls, no predictive algorithms to tell us that. What we can do is we can provide for both our future generations of biological and digital generations a foundation to grow and lead lives that will pass on into future generations of success. Maybe that and also don't sell their poetry on Amazon. <laughs> Rather than fear about what the future might become, I prefer to welcome our new artificial intelligence overlords. Just as every generation has welcomed the next generation since the dawn of time. Between cynicism and hope, I choose hope. And I choose to teach others whether programs or progeny to do the same. Maybe a little bit better than we did ourselves. Thank you.